Start recording. Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, so this is our year in architectural critiques uh, for Architectural Design Studio 2. Uh, so the first thing we'll be talking about um, is the semester project. Um, so for this year, uh, we did our semester project for Cedar Hill residents um, here on campus. So the uh, project purpose, um, obviously, to design um, housing for the Cedar Hill site, which is like kind of beside Founders um, and up from the library. Uh, so the, we had to design uh, a site, including a newly proposed quad area, which I'll show you where that's located in a minute, um, and then also uh, design a new uh, campus interest, entrance slash exit. So here's the site. Um, so this is Cedar Street, as you can see there. Um, and then there's Founders. So the location of the buildings is, is like right here. Um, and the new quad will be down towards the library in between uh, Ober and Brinker. So uh, the site's roughly nine acres. Um, it's actually part of Mount Joy Township. It's kind of weird. Uh, everything else is Elizabethtown Borough. Um, but it's so an open space. Uh, so it's just some things we got to know. Um, it, it's one of the only spots on campus that's sloped uh, southwest um, after you cross Cedar Street, and then it's sloped northwest towards the library. Um, so there's a small building on the site already, um, and then obviously the gravel pathway um, that many people probably walk all the time. Um, and then just kind of some surrounding. Uh, obviously, it's a college town, and there's lots of farms around. Um, so this is the site that I designed. It's a short video. Um, so uh, I did some regrading um, from the library up. So that's over looking. Uh, we're looking at over right now, just kind of placeholder models. Um, so I did new pathways um, and then a center kind of local gathering area with benches and everything. Um, and all this is regraded to kind of flow better, not as steep. Um, as you keep going up the hill, you can see that there's no more uh, Cedar Street. So we removed Cedar Street because it's kind of like a hindrance to students walking across it all the time. There's a lot of people that, a lot of cars coming in and coming out, deliveries and everything like that. Um, and then this is where the, the site, uh, the building would actually be. Um, so here's a, an overview. So like I was saying, so Cedar Street uh, runs right here now. Um, so we re would remove that and then move the entrance to Cherry Street um, and come in where the new walkway that they just put in um, a little bit ago. Um, and then you can come into the parking lot behind the tennis courts and then come around and then go in between Founders and the new proposed building. Um, and then so, as I mentioned, it's kind of like a cent uh, central gathering area, um, sort of in between the library and the new building. Um, and then there's a new layout of pathways. Um, the, existing uh, pathway that kind of goes to the Bowers Writing House is moved down the hill a little bit to just make more room for the, the proposed buildings. And then the rest of the campus kind of stays the same. Um, the, the new entrance would come in and just be a little bit offset from the parking lot, the faculty parking lot beside uh, Brenton. So I'm the first one to talk. Uh, Originally, when I designed the project, I accidentally overshot. Uh, originally, I said we were supposed to do 100 uh, students. This building actually can hold 500. <laughs> the way I designed these projects, I looked to do uh, two very similar buildings on either side. Uh, you'll see when it kind of zooms out, or that zoom right there. Uh, these buildings are basically mirror images of each other. They allow for uh, continuity of the system as kind of adding an enclosure feeling to the center, uh, with them having a larger, more of a curved building in the far end. That curve, uh, it's about a 30 degree curve in the axis uh, to allow for the building to kind of open and enclose it a little bit more. Uh, it just kind of gives more of a community feeling, uh, as you can see with the arch around the outside there. Uh, one of my initial thoughts before knowing exactly how Colton was gonna do the site, because I did this separate because I'm not actually in the class right now, uh, I was gonna have parking spaces around the outside of the back of the buildings to allow for a little bit more community in that space. 
with the road design, that probably would not work that way. Uh, but still, great opportunity. I look to have uh, these small buildings. Each floor has about 14 bedrooms on three floors. The larger building itself contains, I think it was 32 buildings or 32 rooms per floor, as well as providing bathrooms and laundry rooms all in that space. Um, we had some fun trying to get it all together because I, of course, designed my own site and then tried to transfer it between the two. It ended up working pretty well from both of them. So, thank you. So the next, next one is Ruth. The next design is a, t a partner uh, group, so it's Brooklyn and Megan. Uh, so for our design, we have three different buildings, and the building in the center, the idea is to have it more of dorm style rooms, and then the two buildings on the outside are going to be more apartment, independent living style rooms, and the idea behind this was so maybe freshmen and sophomore could look sophomores could live in the dorms and the upperclassmen could live in the outside buildings because I know now the campus seems so separated with different classes because I know Megan's a freshman and I'd love to see her more and if I, I know if we live closer together I probably end up seeing her more and hanging out in this outside common living room. Yeah and like so this is the exterior of our building but like the interior, like we talked about different living spaces, well and like set up like kitchenettes, um, bathrooms. We talked about Jack and Jill style bathroom. I think we don't have one of those on campus. It's really nice way to make space and behind the uh, bathroom we have like a couple closets and just kind of play around with layouts in that main building was owned by freshman dorms and like Brooklyn was saying, having that like communal style living. And then also since we're taking away a lot of the outdoor living space from campus in that like nine acre vicinity, we talked about um, adding a lot of gardens and like maybe some kind of like rooftop like walkout in the back we have that which has like benches and whatnot on it so just really highlighting the space and being able to like still take in the campus views and not just like focus on the interior but like bringing the life of campus outside as well in these areas so the next one is mine um, so I did four buildings um, so the first one uh, up front here was the way through that's kind of like the community building, so it has a, an open area up top. Um, the bottom would be like, kind of like a, a center living area, um, just kind of maybe some games or something like that. Just a common area for people to go relax and hang out. Um, and then also a laundry facility and study rooms. Um, so then there's three other buildings, all different sizes. Um, so the big one on the, right there, right side of the screen um, is more uh, apartment style living so it's I think it's five apartments per floor um, so a total and it's three four floors tall um, so this one here it's five apartments per floor uh, three stories tall um, and there they would all have like a uh, kitchen uh, two bedrooms um, bathrooms one suite um, and then possibly laundry um, in, in the apartment um, the one in the back more uh, kind of like a townhouse style, um, sort of like the, the corner.
quads, so there's five there. Um, and they each would have uh, two bedrooms, um, a living area, a kitchen, um, and obviously the bathroom. And then this building is more of a dormitory style. Um, so on this side, you can kind of see a little, a little skinnier. So that would be like single rooms, um, single and doubles. And then on the other side uh, would be like doubles and triples. Um, and then the hallway runs in the center, and that's also um, that was four stories as well. Um, and then, so I kind of had them centralized, uh, so everything kind of faces the center. Um, and this could be just a nice area to hang out, throw a frisbee, um, or just sit outside and do some work. And yeah, the the next one is uh, Nicholas. So. Prior to switching my major for the fourth time to architecture, I was a history major and I did a lot of research on what was here on the campus before me coming here for classes. And being opened in 1899, one of the biggest activities for students at that time was actually farming here on the campus. And that was uh, active up through the 1920s, early 1930s. And then as they started to expand the programs and put in new buildings, that agricultural sector of, of this freedom for students was taken away. Uh, we had active farmlands here on the campus. We also had an orchard that students were able to uh, partake in picking fruit from and helping to maintain it. So with that in mind, using up this last piece of land on the campus, kind of, I want to pay respect to where the college came from. So my designs are all based around Lancaster County farming themes. So it would be a farmhouse, a bank barn, and then a drying shed. And all of them, the, uh, the farmhouse and the drying barn, would be smaller buildings, about 24 people each, and then the bank barn would be the longest. Each of them would feature uh, two-person rooms, and then every two rooms would have a shared uh, restroom then. But the basic layout of it, it's, I wanted to really show the, the, the proximity of what a farm would be, and that it is very close with one another uh, in the different buildings, and it really highlights the community. So one of the existing buildings, it's one of the three original buildings to the campus, is actually located back on what was historically known as the farm, that nine acre lot. And it's an old stone building, and I thought that would be so neat to take that, renovate that, and have that be kind of a central common area with a beautiful patio on it. It could be like a cafe inside of it. And I think that would really pay a lot of respect to where the campus came from, what our history is, and just make a great community for uh, incoming students. Uh, the next design is by Issa. <clears throat> All right, so um, for my little designs, we have two sections. Um, the main area uh, over here is a uh, something to fit about 60 people um, for 60 students. Um, there's three triples in the front to give people more space as well as uh, doubles on each side. Uh, there'll be two sets of, of bathrooms, male and female, um, in the, the center of the area to give more of a, a different space. Um, you can cross through the bathroom to get to, other, to the other side instead of having to go around. Um, the lobby area uh, has this big amount of space right here, kind of like in a T-shape. Um, and on each side, there's either singles or doubles with individual bathrooms, um, such as sinks and uh, toilets. This is the second area, um, which is, uh, there's two on each side of the main building. Um, in this area, there's this big common area for uh, special things like uh, seating or studying, um, and maybe like a, a pool table or something like that, you can fit in this area. There's bathrooms on each side, and there's five rooms on each side. Uh, this is a one level, a uh, one story um, building to kind of give it a different view since everything else is mostly two stories. This can fit up, up to about 26 students, um, both sides of the rooms. And each room has one on the corner, and the view is coming from the center of the campus. Uh, right here, this is the side view of the, of the building. Um, this is a, a triangle roof inspired by the Unitarian, um, First Unitarian Society by Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, I thought that design was pretty interesting and created a good uh, watershed as well as a great uh, overhang. Uh, it was also 
question to me. Um, this side, this is flipped the other way, but um, this is the side of the roof. Uh, it's pretty long, so it's uh, like I said, one story, and they had the basement components, so we had one of the bigger laundry and stuff. Um, and then the next design is uh, by Hugh. Um, he's not here today. Um, so just two key things. Uh, he had one main centralized building um, on the left um, that was kind of inspired by uh, the Hackman Apartments. Um, so it would be similar in the floor plan to the Hackman. Um, and then two kind of main features he had on that building is like the entryway on the left, which is kind of set back in with like a column sort of in the front. Um, and that goes the whole way up to the, the, the roof level. Um, and then also the other entryway on the right is recessed into the wall um, just to give a little bit more sense of kind of conform um, before you go in the building. Um, and then he also had a uh, centralized uh, gazebo, sort of like the Dell, um, that would be placed in like, the center of his building. So you got uh, one here, one here, one here, and then the uh, gazebo would be kind of in the center, more uh, sort of like the focal point So uh, that's the, the uh, semester project. Um, so if we have any questions on that for any of us, uh, we can answer them now. And then after that, we'll go into some other works that we did this semester. So I can, for my design, um, I would have elevators um, in each one of my buildings um, for handicap reasons and uh, also for ease of moving, moving things in. Um, because obviously if you're on the third floor or fourth floor, you don't really want to carry a bunch of stuff up and down. Um, and then parking wise, uh, we didn't, uh, the site kind of has room for parking. Um, between where the founders and the new proposed building would be, like right off side of the road. Um, so we could implement parking there, um, maybe just like one row along the side of the road, um, or kind of similar to like in front of founders, how they have just the, the straight in parking. Um, so that's kind of how I would address it. Uh, does anybody else have any? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, okay. I was just gonna say, um, one of the things like being a freshman this year, Having my RA, or like one of the RAs lug my fridge all the way up to my dorm was not very nice for me to see because they were struggling. So like stuff like that where it's like these new buildings, having elevators, since our, a lot of our dormitories are old, especially as freshmen, having a lot of stuff since we don't really know what to bring, um, you know, just having elevators was really important. And I know like we're working on the interiors for our design for our final project. Like we did make sure to put that in there. Um, and like the parking you said, that's, something that we didn't necessarily talk about, but those like modern technologies that make our life like easier and should be pertinent in our buildings like nowadays will definitely be implemented in any of our semester projects. I just wanted to add, I'm, I'm the professor, and uh, the final, final project isn't due for about two and a half weeks where we're gonna have a visiting architect come in, and we just wanted to have something ready for SCAD. So they'll still have floor plans and have worked out parking and everything. So um, all these are, are great,
me at least, I know I when I went through design, I wanted to go for a simplistic yet modern style. Um, that's kind of why I kept the exterior very kind of to point because that allows for a sustainable building. It's not going to have the extravagant parts that are constantly needing to be man maintained because if they're not, it could cause collapse and stuff like that. Um, so I really did look at that. Um, I didn't necessarily look towards the lead certification side. Um, if I had, I probably would if I had a little more time with it just to take sit down and take a look at it. But as of right now, I'm mostly focused with that sustainable because from the design, it's there's enough space, a lot of quantity of space that allows for changes and all that if needed, but it also can allow for improvements quite easily. I can also speak to my design. Um, I also didn't really think about the lead certification, but I tried to design mine so that you could get as much you know, passive lighting and cooling as possible. Um, on the top floor, I intended to have like a, a glass sort of sort of deck window, like doors, like the French doors that come open. Um, because I noticed in my own quad, I get the most sunlight on the top floor and my, my kitchen and my living room are pretty much shaded all day. Um, so I, I'd like that for a communal space where I could get a lot of shading, but also I wanted to orient mine towards the tree line so I could still have that, that cooling as well so it wouldn't eat up as much the electricity. I'm gonna chime in just a little bit here because I make the assignments and I left it open-ended here that most of the students have had green architectural engineering, where then we have very much sustainability as a main theme. And then they also, you'll see a couple excerpts of some projects where they had a clear story window and a green roof and a thermal mass wall as one project. So, but on, on the final, final projects, I like to leave it open-ended. And costs are kind of hard when you're doing conceptual design. I know from being on real committees and real buildings that just putting elevators in is gonna you know, break the budget a little bit, even though it would be nice to have. But I don't wanna restrain them at this point with the conceptual. So I think we're all started to work on the interiors. Um, I don't think all of us are finished on the interiors yet. Um, but I know, like for my design, I kind of want to do a, a zero energy building. So that is kind of the big factor. So that'll play a role in the HVAC design as well. Um, but the passive, like Ruth was saying, passive, air, passive cooling, heating, um, all those things are sort of kind of what we look at when we're designing the interiors as well. Um, but We, we do have some very specific things we do in this course where they get a green roofing specification. They had a 30-page boilerplate official spec that they would go in and look at the details. And then, as I mentioned, in green architecture engineering, we have whole chapters and whole projects on passive versus active uh, heating and cooling. And, and so, um, yeah, it's not a specific requirement here. Yeah. But it's nice to yeah, think yeah. about it. And they're not done yet. I mean, yeah. So these are just some other works that we've done throughout the semester on various projects. Um, it's not everything that we've done, but just a few things to, to highlight. Um, so this first one uh, is Roots.
So one of something that I really consider when doing my designs is I'm not too keen on new construction projects. I really like I don't like to see our open land being taken up. So I look at how things could be modified and renovated to make them as efficient as possible. So this is based off of uh, an old farmhouse style, and this was an addition of a dormer on the top of it for letting this light into. So this would be a pool height attic essentially that would be turned into a living space then. And it's designed that you know, over the summer solstice, the light comes directly down behind the dormer, so that way it would not be overheating that upper attic room, which obviously attics normally do get hot. Uh, but over winter time, then the sun would be coming directly in there. And uh, behind here, then you'd have a thermal mass wall just to help heat the space um, and yeah, make it as, as livable as possible and making the most uh, use out of the space in the house without having to do a completely new project. Um, so this was my design for that same project. Um, I use shipping containers, um, so kind of going off of a uh, kind of a reuse kind of design. Um, so repurpose, reuse. Uh, so the bottom has two shipping containers kind of spread out um, with the regular construction in the center. Um, and then there's two shipping containers on the second floor uh, smashed together and turned uh, perpendicular to the bottom two. Um, and then there's a third one up above uh, which is where the windows would be. So uh, when during, as they were mentioning, um, in the sun study, which I have a video of, um, in the winter sol uh, solstice, it comes right in, and then in the summer, it kind of goes above. Um, and then there's, it's, this is kind of double height here, so this is all open to below, so it lets in plenty of natural light. Um, and then you can kind of see in this picture the, the back, so I kind of split these in half, and then the back is all open uh, for some outdoor living. Um, kind of seating area and everything like that. So here's two uh, sun studies. Um, the one on the left is the summer solstice and then the winter solstice is on the right. So it just kind of shows you how the sun goes in the, the different windows um, at the different times of the day. That Both are uh, the full day, um, so you can see the shadows. This project um, is by uh, Brooklyn. Um, so through this project, I picked out a plot of land in Cookstown, PA. And so in Cookstown, it's just mostly land and trees. So I didn't want the house to stand out too much from the land and kind of just blend into it and just really focus on the natural features around it. So here's the south side of the house. So I included a lot of windows. Um, to get that southern sun that comes in and then added a pergola to kind of filter out the sun from coming in during the summertime and it might heat up the house too much. Um, and then also this on this eastern side room, I added a lot of windows and some skylights because um, when the sun rises um, in the east in the morning, I thought it would be kind of nice to like sit in that room and have some tea or coffee and enjoy the sun in the morning. Um, and then I also included a green roof over the garage. Um, and yeah. Oh yeah, and there's the site plan. So um, this is the south side where all, a lot of the sun would be coming in and then the north side. I included a porch there because um, in on the actual land there's a pond on the other side. So I thought it'd be nice to also sit on the porch and enjoy the view of Megan, um, the same project. Um, so these are my designs for the first story window project. Um, you're also supposed to design a thermal mass wall and a green roof. So I have the green roofs up here, and they um, include like the large roof of membrane and like vegetation to stick around the top so it's visible from the outside. And then the whole purpose of the first story window is to be above eye level. So I did mine all the way to the top to let light into the center of the space. And this design is just completely non-traditional. Um, having like 